They are two extra security options with most motherboards, commonly called Administrator Password and User Password. These are normally enabled in a public environment or when there is a possibility that a user may obtain unauthorised access to the BIOS, the UEFI or the operating system. Initially, it is possible for a user to enter a password, prohibiting even the owner of the system from entering the BIOS, UEFI or the operating system. Secondly, it is possible that an administrator could forget the password that was used. So as IT engineers, we should have the knowledge on how to set and reset these passwords. Not all motherboards support these options, however we shall be looking at two of the most popular. The first of these is the MSI motherboards. Here we have entered the UFEI and the option we are looking for is security. In our example it can be found in settings. Here we have selected user password and entered 5665. Of course this could be any mixture of 20 characters in length that can be accessed from the keyboard. In most cases you will be prompted to confirm the new password and if this differs in any way then the password option is cancelled. We can see here that the user password has been installed. At this point the F10 key is pressed and yes is selected to save the password and exit. As the computer restarts the user will be prompted for their password and they have three attempts before they are locked out. In our example we have just pressed the enter key three times. At this stage the keyboard is locked and you will have no option but to restart the computer. To continue they have to enter the correct password. We can see here that Windows is starting. So if the user password is set, then without it, the user will be unable to access the computer, BIOS, UEFI or the operating system. To remove the password, navigate to the security option. Then select user password and enter the current password. You'll be then given the opportunity to create a new password. By pressing enter twice, we'll remove it. To set the administrator's password and to see its effects, this option is selected. We enter a password, then confirm it. Pressing F10, then clicking on yes will save and exit the UEFI. This time we are not prompted to enter a password and the computer continues to boot into Windows. Let's restart the computer and try and enter the UFEI. Here we are prompted to enter a password. Once again we have three attempts before locking us out. So setting the administrator's password restricts access to the BIOS or the UEFI. Again to reset the password you would choose setting security administrator password then enter the current password. By pressing enter twice, the password is removed, followed by the F10 key to save and exit. This is all well if the password is known, but as we've already pointed out, if a user has set either password, then even the owner of the computer will be unable to enter the UEFI or the operating system. Almost all motherboards have some way of resetting the CMOS. Remember, the CMOS is only temporary memory, and it is powered by a battery. So when we enter a password, it is saved within the CMOS. We should understand the relationship between the UEFI and the CMOS. The UEFI is a set of options, and the CMOS is where the information is stored. So by resetting the CMOS, we'll remove any selected options within it. Here is an actual picture of the battery that powers the CMOS and the jumper setting that allows us to reset or more commonly known as discharge the CMOS. Now we can see a practical example. Here is the schematic diagram of the motherboard. The 
we can use like a roadmap to find different devices, ports or jumper settings on it. The one we are interested in is the CMOS setting. On this page of the manual we have found clear CMOS jumper and it is labelled as JBAT1. Be aware that the name of the jumper does vary. It's just in this example it is called JBAT1. It goes on to say there is a CMOS RAM on board with an external battery power supply to preserve the system configuration data. That refers to the battery we spoke about earlier. With the CMOS RAM the system can automatically boot OS every time it is turned on. If you want to clear the system configuration set the jumper to clear. First let's locate JBAT1 on the schematic diagram. It is located next to the PCIe slot. Now let's refer to the actual motherboard. The image of JBAT1 is a view looking down on it. The connection consists of three electrical contacts similar to what we can see here. The black area shown in Keep Data is a jumper that is a metal link encased in plastic. It joins pin 1 and 2 together. In Clear Data pin 2 to 3 are connected together. Back to the manual. You can clear CMOS by shorting 2 to 3 pin while the system is off. Then return to 1 to 2 pin position. Avoid clearing the CMOS while the system is on as this may damage the main board. A very important point. Returning to the motherboard after powering down and removing the mains cable we find that the jumper is near the video card. It would be possible to move the jumper using a pair of long nose pliers but so we can be clear on how to discharge the CMOS we will remove it. This particular video adapter has a power connector plugged into it. This will need removing first. This connector is held into place with a securing clip which needs depressing as it's pulled away from the adapter. It is secured to the case with two screws that also need removing. As this is a PCIe card you will find it is held in place with a plastic locking device. We can see one on this PCIe slot. In most cases this will need to be gently pulled to one side as shown then the video adapter can be pulled away from the slot. Now we can see the CMOS battery and the three pins jumper settings. Back to the manual. It states to clear data or discharge the CMOS the jumper must be moved to pin 2 to 3. Next we have to identify which of these pins is P1. We can clearly see here a number 1. Therefore pin 2 is the middle and pin 3 is the left one. To discharge the CMOS the jumper will need moving to pin 2 to 3. So these two pins will be linked together. Normally it is best to leave it in this position for about 5 seconds. After this time return the jumper to its normal position or in our example pin 1 to 2. Now the video adapter can be replaced along with the fixing screws and the power adapter. Most systems when powered back up will prompt you to run setup as we can see here. Of course any settings within the CMOS will have been lost. This includes the boot up sequence and date and time. So you will need to check and change these if necessary.